organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Coming up on Daily Iowan TV, check out some Hawkeye fans who got a chance to visit with UI athletes as part of Homecoming Week. Plus, see why more Iowa Citians are buying organic food. And in sports, we'll look ahead to this weekend's homecoming game against Indiana in our weekly Daily Iowan pregame special. That and more is coming your way next. Daily Iowan TV starts now. Thanks for tuning in to your Thursday edition of Daily Iowan TV, your television news, sports, and weather for the Daily Iowan. I'm Dana Davidson. And I'm Josh Bolander. Homecoming festivities continued last night with Sports Night at the University of Iowa's Athletics Hall of Fame. Hawkeye fans gathered at the event Wednesday night to meet and greet Hawkeye athletes and the Spirit Squad. Attendees also got the chance to take a trip down memory lane by viewing Hawkeye memorabilia. That's great because the uh, family and relatives are coming in town. It's a great way for the Hawks to get a big win in front of everyone that's been here, all the alumni. Uh, it's hopefully in the season on it right now. Unfortunately for some, the Hawkeye football team was not in attendance because of the team's study night. However, fans were able to meet athletes from the softball team, women's basketball team, and track and field. Homecoming week will obviously wrap up with the game Saturday, but be sure to come out Friday night for all the sights and sounds of the homecoming parade. Daily Iowan TV will be teaming up with UITV to host the parade, and the program will air on UITV next week. UI Professor of Epidemiology Robert Wallace was awarded the Walsh McDermott Medal of Honor in his Distinguished Service of the University of Iowa on Thursday. Since 1987, Wallace has participated in dozens of studies, reviewed numerous reports, and has served as a chair on two Institute of Medicine boards. In 2004, Wallace was given the Faculty Research Award by the UI College of Public Health. Organic food isn't just for tree huggers anymore. More and more people around Iowa City are buying locally grown organic food, and it's not just for the health benefits. Daily Iowan TV's Jeff Shane tells us more about this growing trend. It takes more time and effort to eat the way I do. But ask yourself, are you worth it? That's the question students need to ask themselves when deciding to eat organic food or not. Experts are now saying locally grown organic food without preservatives are much better for your health. Employees at the new Pioneer Co-op in Coralville would argue it's a better decision to shop there, not just because of the food quality, but also it helps the local economy. And the way that we organize our business is that it's all about local. It's pretty much win, win, win. You're helping yourself, the community, and you're helping the environment. UI grad student Paul Jermahoff, who started eating organic food after moving out of the dorms, believes spending a little more money on food is worth it and has made necessary adjustments to his diet to match the products that the co-op sells. The co-op releases a schedule of what's going to be on sale and so that helps me vary my appetite as well. Now most students I spoke to did say they would eat more organic food if they could afford it, but on a limited student budget it can be difficult. A lot of my Roommates and I are all on budget, so we don't have the funds to buy organic food in the first place, and it's, again, not easy to come by. However, Anderson has a solution, and that's putting organic food in the dorm cafeterias. Students can get there easier. Not all students have cars, so they can't go to the grocery store, and time, too. Regardless of the price, organic eaters feel the food is worth the cost. You know, you'll spend two, three hundred dollars on a tattoo. Why wouldn't you spend two or three more dollars each meal? Experts say the best organic food to buy are things like apples and lettuce, and the organic products, probably not worth the added expense, are things like onions and pineapples. Jeff Shane, Daily Iowa TV. For more information about the co-op and eating organic food, food, visit the website at the bottom of the screen. An Iowa City man is being charged with beating his girlfriend with a tire iron. According to police reports, 21-year-old Darren Dirks hit his girlfriend eight times in the head and face following a heated argument. Dirks was arrested after officers responded to a Mercy Hospital where his girlfriend was being treated for lacerations to the head, a broken tooth, and possible bone fractures. 
Dirks admitted that grabbing the tire iron because he allegedly felt threatened, but he couldn't remember why. Dirks is being charged with willfully causing serious injury. In a new study published by the University of Iowa, researchers have found that countries with national elections have more volatile economies. Countries with dictators, however, tend to have more stable markets as the lack of political turmoil makes for safer investing. And while that could be more economic upheaval for Libya in the future, Thursday saw the realization of a revolution with the news that Muammar Gaddafi has been killed. Many people took to the streets to celebrate the demise of the longtime dictator. The Libyan prime minister said Gaddafi was caught in the crossfire between rebel troops and his supporters. Gaddafi has had been in control of the African nation for the past 42 years before being ousted earlier this year. And now Adrian Crossley joins us in the studio for a look at your local weather forecast. Adrian, it's looking kind of cold out there. It was pretty chilly today, but you can expect things to warm up in a bit in the next couple of days. However, not before we see our first frost of the season. It might be a bit frosty to start off your Friday, and you can expect to see about 38 degrees around 9 o'clock. By noon, the sun will come up with a slight breeze, and it'll get up to about 52 degrees. By the evening, you can expect to see temps in the mid-50s for ho the homecoming parade. And that should cool down to about 48 degrees by 9 p.m. Looking at the extended forecast, it looks to be a bit chilly for tailgating Saturday as we'll see about 54 degrees at kickoff. That should warm up to temps in the mid-60s by end of the game. We may see highs in the upper 60s and isolated thunderstorms by Tuesday, but you can expect to see that dip in the 50s again by Wednesday and Thursday. That's your check at the weather. Back to you at the desk. And only with Daily Iowan TV can you get a sneak peek at Friday's pages of the Daily Iowan. Read about the first annual Iowa City charity zombie ball and undead masquerade. Plus, read a profile about Iowa wide receiver Marvin McNutt as he looks to break Iowa's all-time receiving touchdown record against Indiana this weekend. After a big win against the Wildcats last week, the Hawks are hoping to keep the momentum rolling. And to get you ready, we have everything you need to know in our weekly breakdown we call Daily Iowan Pregame. All right, for two straight years, Indiana has given somewhat of a scare to the Hawks, but this year the black and gold hope to maybe not wait until the last minute to win against this 1-6 Indiana team. Welcome into Daily Iowan TV Pregame. I'm Jake Abrams. Should be a great homecoming morning. This is Iowa's 100th homecoming game. And overall, when Indiana plays the Hawks on homecoming, the black and gold are 8-5. and five. On top of that, the Hawks like playing at home. Dating back to the 2002 season, the Hawks have only lost 11 games at Kinnick Stadium. And since the start of 2008, Iowa is 21-4. and four. But enough with the numbers. Before we hear from Coach regarding the upcoming game, let's see what he had to say about last week's win over Northwestern. Then just outstanding uh, all season long for a long time and night games in uh, Kinnick are really special so we appreciate the fans and their particip participation with the cards and uh, what have you. I think that uh, really got pulled off well. Paul Federici does a nice job orchestrating that or hatching some ideas and it was uh, just a really great environment down there. Uh, and the other thing too, I was, I was remiss the other night, I didn't congratulate Marvin McNutt but uh, uh, tying uh, two pretty pretty elite uh, players in, in Tim Dwight and Dan and Hughes, that's quite an accomplishment. So uh, congratulate Marvin on that feat, and uh, uh, hopefully he can push past those guys, certainly. And there was a pause among all heartbeats when the final pass was thrown last year. If you remember, Hawkeye Nation thought the Hawks lost the game until it was revealed that the pass was incomplete. And looking back on it, this year's players know they kind of got out of Bloomington with luck on their side. Got away just by the, uh, the skins on our back last year, escaped the last second. Um, pass that almost was caught and uh, we know they're a good team and that won't be any different this year. We, we just we just have to play play as a team. Uh, we have to play with great technique and uh, I, you know honestly I, I, I think we can press these guys same way we, we, we've been doing the whole the whole season and uh, we have to make sure that, that uh, we uh, make them make them earn any catch that he gets. Let's recall last year's game. Indiana had the chance to win but the pass went right through the receivers hands to give the Hawks the victory. Something that caught the Iowa defense by surprise because they know how good Indiana's receivers really are. I'm still in shock, but you know you can't really look forward to you can't really look back to last year. You just gotta compete. But he's a he's gonna come out and play. You know that guy's he's a good receiver and uh, he's he's big. Like I say those those wide receivers are pretty good. They have big tall guys and uh, usually they have a quarterback that's pretty sharp and pretty accurate. So we all have to play the, to the best of our ability. We still have six more tough Big Ten opponents left and uh, that starts with this week and you, you can't dwell on 
a win or a loss very long or, or it'll hinder you. You know, you never know what can happen. You know, like last year, you know, they were, I'm sure, a big underdog to us last year. You know, they are you know, one pass away from, from beating us. So, you know, we should go in there. we got to be ready to, ready to play against them. Well, it's been bad news for the Hoosiers. First-year coach Kevin Wilson, the team has lost five of their first six games. They beat South Carolina State at home back in mid-September, but getting blown out by Illinois and Wisconsin, they're going to try to avoid another embarrassment on the road when they come to Iowa City on Saturday. Kirk Ferentz is 6-4 and four against Indiana, and although the Hoosiers haven't won against the Hawks since 2007 and only have one win this season, Captain Kirk is still not looking past this team. Last year, the black and gold were victorious, but Indiana had more completions and first downs and less penalties. Either way, it's another year and a different team. We're playing Indiana this week, obviously, and uh, you know, we move on to our next Big Ten opponent. Uh, glad, glad to be at home. And uh, I think, as everybody knows, we've had a, a real difficult time with them the last two years. You know, Last year's game went right down to the last snap. Two years ago, we were very fortunate to uh, get that thing turned around because it wasn't looking too good. So uh, you look at that. Uh, look at uh, you know just uh, their game with Penn State a couple weeks ago. I'd, I'd much rather been in the position they were in last couple minutes than where we were at and uh, against the same opponent. And their team going through a little bit of a transition with the new staff certainly, but they've got a lot of talented players, and uh, so we've got a challenge of trying to match up with them. And then we also have a challenge of trying to get better and clean up a lot of our uh, areas that need improvement. Many times we get caught up talking about what's going on on the field. But what goes on in the press box above the stands? He's been named the Iowa Sportscaster of the Year, and many know him as the voice of the Hawkeyes. He's the host of the weekly radio program called Hawk Talk and the play-by-play -play announcer for Hawkeye basketball and football. Daily Iowa TV's Lauren Moss caught up with Hawkeye broadcaster Gary Dolphin earlier to learn more about the man behind the mic. Gary, can you tell me what it's like to be the voice of the Hawkeyes for 15 years? Oh, it's, it's, it's been enriching, um, Lauren. It's... Uh... It's a true labor of love for me because growing up in this state, uh, any young lad or female, for that matter, who grew up an Iowa Hawkeye fan uh, longed to be the voice of the Hawkeyes. Uh, I grew up like a lot of kids did in the 60s and 70s, uh, listening to Iowa football every Saturday afternoon and Iowa basketball during those long, cold winter nights. And uh, when I decided I wanted to be a, a journalism major, a public relations major, uh, that's what ultimately I wanted to do. What was it like when you first got this job? Well, interestingly enough, uh, I never applied for the job. I was uh, uh, doing Northwestern games in Chicago. I was working for the Bears at the time. Mm -hmm. I had done Iowa football for six or seven years back in the 70s. And, and during that seven or eight year period, I had uh, uh, nurtured a lot of friendships and relationships here at the campus uh, at the University of Iowa. I knew most of the coaches. I knew all of the administrators, uh, including Bob Bowlesby, who was the athletic director at the time. And so here I was watching from afar uh, with interest as to who was going to be the next <laughs> voice of the Hawkeyes, because I thought that window of opportunity had closed for me. And then out of the blue one day, I got a call from uh, a member of the search committee, and they said, hey, we're kind of curious as to why you haven't applied. And like you said, you work with the Chicago Bears, but what has made you stick with the Hawkeyes for so long? Simply because uh, this was the team I grew up with. Uh, I grew up 60 miles from here, mm -hmm. and I came to uh, a lot of games, went to a lot of Iowa basketball games. What better way to, uh, to go through adult life than uh, covering the team and the university that you love so much? Right. Gary, it was an honor to meet you, and I'm looking Thank forward you. to hearing your broadcast this season. Thanks a lot, Lauren. Thank you. All right, thanks, Lauren. Well, that's going to do it. We're out of time. Thanks for tuning in to Daily Iowa TV. Remember to tune in to Daily Iowa TV on Sunday night to get a full recap of this week's matchup versus Indiana. Have a great homecoming weekend.